Hello. I thought this week we'd have a look at what's in my pencil case. Um, these are some of the drawing tools that I use fairly frequently, some mostly. <laughs> um, some of my favourite tools and uh, some that I've just come across that I think I ought to use one day, even though I haven't quite used them yet. So um, yeah, this is my lovely tool roll that my uh, wife made for me. And in here we've got a selection of things, so I'll go through them in order. Stick this to one side. So first of all, starting with the everyday, I've got a selection of pencils. Um, and this is a, an HB, so it's good to have something reasonably light for roughing things out that you don't want to do too heavily. And these these uh, Stedler school pencils or whatever, perfectly good. Uh, next I've got something, a friend of mine gave me this one, Blackwing, which is slightly softer. It's probably more like a, a 2B or something. Um, nice and smooth, nice to, nice to draw with. And then I've got these very soft ones, which are 8B from Derwent. Um, actually, I don't think this is as soft as an 8B really, because I've got this, this nice Conte, which is a 3B, which I think is softer still. So be aware that these ratings can be all over the place, depending on the brand. But, um, but this, this 8B is quite fun to draw with. It's, you do get some nice, rich darks out of it. It doesn't smudge too much. Uh, but you can draw nice and lightly with it too, so it's just kind of a nice pencil. I'm enjoying that. Next up, we've got some more pencils, uh, but these are wax pencils, so kind of thing you'd use for colouring in. Um, first one I've got is this Stedler Ergo Soft, which again is it's a bit lighter. It's sort of it's still nice and smooth, and you can get some richer tones out of it, but it's not as soft as these Prismacolor. Uh, Premier pencils, and these I'm very fond of. They're really waxy. You can get some very dark, rich tones out of them. And I particularly like the black, the black one, which I use for a lot of my drawing. It goes very nicely on smooth Bristol board, Bristol paper, and it's just really nice to have a pencil that can give you such a wide range of pressures, from very light to very rich, dark, solid blacks, um, with no smudging is useful if it's knocking around in your sketch in your sketchbook or your bag you know if you work with something as soft as an 8b graphite pencil and then walk around with it for a weekend by the time you get home it might all be smudged to nothing if you've not fixed it and the other good advantage with a wax pencil is that they're not as shiny so when you scan them they scan a bit better too um, the disadvantage with them is that they don't rub out very well they're they're kind of permanent so you have to work very lightly to start with and then firm things up later when you're sure you're happy with it. Speaking of erasers and rubbers, um, I've got this, what's this, uh, Faber-Castell kneaded putty rubber. They're very useful because you can shape them to a point and you don't get lots of bits of rubber all over the place so it's nice and tidy and you can just sort of lift up the bits you want to erase, very useful. And to sharpen those pencils, I have this lovely cum masterpiece, the masterpiece, um, which has two holes, but they're not for um, big and small pencils. You actually sharpen your pencils in two stages. So you put it in number one first and it sharpens, you see the lead poking out the end, it sharpens the wood without touching the lead. Once you've sharpened the wood, you can sharpen the lead on its own without sharpening the wood in this number two and that way it puts less strain on the lead and I find especially with these soft wax pencils that have far more they have far fewer breakages sometimes with the old-fashioned standard ira uh, sharpener you can find yourself with a very soft pencil sharpening away most of the pencil as it keeps snapping off inside the sharpener um, so that's those Next up, I've got this combination of a very light marker. Uh, Scott Robertson uses this method quite often, and it was quite new to me, but it's quite a fun thing to experiment with. So these Copic markers come in various braids. So this is a one, which is the very lightest, and you can barely see it on the page. But it's again, it, again, it's a very useful way to rough things out. So when you're just when you're faced with a blank page and you're just trying to work out what it is you want to draw, and you're just feeling around for what it is, um, just like you would draw very lightly with a light pencil, 
you can do that with a, a very light marker too. It's double-ended, so it has a sort of chisel tip on the other end, and they can be refilled. And then once you've got your rough, you can go over with a, a biro and pick out the, the lines that you meant to draw attention to, and all the ones that were just mistakes or things that you wanted to ignore later on, they're, um, they just disappear into the page because they're so light. Biro-wise, I'm not fussy really, this is a chimney, but the big standard big pens are nice. Anything really. Uh, next up we've got some fine liners, and I like these uh, Mitsubishi ones, um, mainly because they're permanent ink, so it means you can go over with um, you can go over with some watercolours without them bleeding and turning blue. <laughs> so I've got a very fine one, a point two, and also a one millimetre one, which is nice and bold. And actually the combination of the two can be quite good. When if you're doing something architectural, maybe a building, you can do some bolder outlines and then some finer details, the brickwork and stuff with this point two. It's kind of nice to have a combination of a thick and a thin line in a drawing. So that's those Mitsubishis. And there's also a Mitsubishi brush pen in that same range. So this is, again, this is exactly the same as the fine liner, but this one's got a brush tip. And it looks like a normal felt, uh, felt pen, but it's just got an ever so slight amount of, it's kind of like a rubber tip almost to explain it. It's quite firm. But with, you can vary the pressure, so it could be good for um, sort of calligraphy. Maybe you know you could do thick, thick and thin lines nicely with that. But it just gives you a slightly more expressive line than the fine liner that's always the same thickness. And at the other end of the brush pen scale, I've got this Pentel brush pen, and this is much more like a typical paintbrush. You can see the bristles, and it's a very long tip, so it's very soft, and so it really takes a bit of effort to control the thick and thin. I think these are used for Japanese calligraphy and things, but um, this is one of those things, it's a beautiful drawing tool, but it frightens me too much, so I've hardly ever used it for any drawings. I did do a cap drawing with it once, which was nice, and uh, they can be refilled, so that's a nice thing. A bit less plastic in the ocean. <laughs> um, so how are we getting on? Oh yeah, some big chunky markers. Sometimes you can find yourself getting carried away and just noodling away on small detailed drawings and be becoming afraid to do any big gestural marks and you get tighter and tighter and your drawing gets more and more stiff. So on days like that it's a good idea to break out a big felt pen like a sharpie marker and try drawing with that so you can't get bogged down in tiny details you just have to be big and bold, and that often will break that um, streak of noodling. <laughs> and the sign pen, these, this one's starting to run out a little bit. It usually you know, has a really good ink flow. Uh, having said that, drawing with a felt pen that's on, it's, it's starting to run out. is actually quite nice because it gives you a bit of a, a wider range of types of marks. You can still go over it twice to get the thicker solid blacks but you can also draw quite lightly with it, like with a light pencil, which is a, a useful thing. So normally this would be a lot thicker and bolder, but it's, like I say, it's just starting to run out a bit, but those, they're very nice. Uh, I'm not sure that those are permanent, those ones. Um, next, next uh, for pen drawing, you really can't beat, I think, a, a fountain pen, just because they've got so much character to them. You know, this, this is a Fude nib in a Duke 209 pen, um, which has a sort of bent tip to it. It allows you to get very wide range of thick and thin lines, depending on the angle you hold it. Really nice. So that's my favourite pen at the moment. But I am... Um, I'm very fickle when it comes to favourite pens. So I've also have this favourite pen, <laughs> which I got recently, which I'm still getting used to, but it has a, a flexible nib. This is from the Desiderata Pen Company, handmade in Chicago. But it has this beautiful flexible dip pen nib in it. But you fill it with ink rather than dipping it, so really useful. 
and then my old favourites, which were the um, Rotring Art Pen. Very nice, especially the double B extra broad nib. That was my favourite one. And uh, I'm also playing around with this Sailor, um, which is another Fude nib, um, but it's even broader than the Duke 209, so quite fun that one. Um, but I haven't used it for anything yet. And last but not least, um, I've got my watercolour set. So I have a, a travel watercolour set. These are from Windsor and Newton. I use that with um, a Pentel water brush. So this is like a brush pen, I suppose, but instead of ink, it has water in the handle. And um, that saves you from having to balance pots of water and a palette and a pen and your sketchbook if you're out sketching. Um, so it's more for travelling. But the idea is that you just give it a bit of a squeeze, get the nib wet, dip it in your colours, mix away, and then you can you can even draw with it. You can, you'll get these come in various thicknesses, but I just use the widest, the biggest one I find gives me enough range that for what I do. And then you either wash it and un, or, uh, dry it with a piece of kitchen towel or on your trouser leg, whatever's easiest, and uh, yeah, dry the nib, and then you can pick another colour, mix away. So that's a really very useful thing if you're a travel sketcher, you know, you're trying to not have pots of water in your bag. And I use that with um, pencil usually, but occasionally pens. And then for highlights, I've got one of these Posca markers and that just allows you to draw in white on top of your colour, which is quite useful if you just want to add some little highlights at the end of your drawing. Um, I used to use these these gel pens, but I find that they dry out quite quick. So even though there's lots of ink still in there, probably, yeah, see it's kind of dried out again. Not great. Whereas these Posca ones, they never seem to dry out. Um, yeah, I think that's all of them. Oh, for the ink, I should have said, in the fountain pens, I'm using this carbon ink at the moment. But the uh, this Diatramentis is very nice too. Both permanent, so you can draw over them with with your watercolour. Which I'll try that now. There you go. So you can see the... I think all of those... Uh, yeah, all of these brush pens and things, they're all permanent ink. So that's very useful if you don't want them to smudge when you go over with your watercolours. Right, um, so those are some of my favourite drawing tools. Um, like I say, some I use more than others, but um, I think if you try, if you want to, if, you, if you're looking for something fun to try out, um, you shouldn't go too far wrong with any of those that I've just gone through. Um, yeah, let me know your favourites, because it's always fun to go to a, an art shop and try some new stuff out, and uh, I'll see you again for another film soon.